Hello, my name is Hilary Weller. In this series of short videos, I'll describe the shallow water equations, what they represent when considering global atmospheric modelling, how they can be modelled, and some of the numerical analysis of the schemes presented. Many of the processes in the atmosphere can be represented by the shallow water equations. I'm going to call these the SWE in the text. Uh, th there's some assumptions that are needed to derive the shallow water equations from the Euler equations or the Navier-Stokes equations. First of all, we assume that horizontal length scales are much greater than vertical length scales and that vertical velocities are very small. Um, then we depth integrate the Navier-Stokes equations including orography, that's the height of mountains, to get the shallow water equations. And I'm not expecting students to be able to reproduce this derivation. So, but this, these are the shallow water equations. So we have a depth integrated wind vector U, so, and here is the Lagrangian derivative of U, so that's the rate of change of time plus advection. Coriolis term looks very much like the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, the pressure gradient has turned into a mixture between gravity and a uh, change in height. This h is now the fluid depth. So we have a solid surface of height h naught, a fluid depth and a horizontal velocity. Um, and the, the pressure gradient has turned into a, a gradient of the free surface. So that's h plus h naught is the height of the free surface. And if you've got diffusion, there's a diffusion of velocity here. And then there's also a continuity equation. The continuity equation becomes the equation for the fluid depth h. This is in advective form, so the Lagrangian derivative of h plus um, h times their divergence is equal to zero. Um, so uh, when studying the uh, momentum equation of the Navier-Stokes equations, which is in section 1.3 of these notes, um, we looked at the meaning of each of the terms in the momentum equation. So from these, try to work out the meaning of the terms in the momentum equation of the shallow water equations. I'm not going to go through that in this video. Um, so this, in order to understand why we study the shallow water equations in, uh, when doing atmospheric modelling, I'm showing a, a simulation of the shallow water equations. And you can see that this looks quite a bit like weather, quite a bit like global circulation, large-scale circulation. Um, this is a simulation of, um, so the colours are the height h, these contours here are a mountain, and the, you can see vectors representing the wind. This is a, a famous test case um, from uh, Williamson et al, 1992, test case 5, flow over a mountain. You start off with high height at the equator, low height at the pole, and all the wind in geostrophic balance. And then um, the flow adjusts, there are gravity waves and Rossby waves of which respond to this mountain um, and it adjusts into this pattern that responds to the mountain. And you can see this list looks quite similar to simulations of the atmosphere, a lot of the same processes involved which is why we're interested in um, modelling the shallow water equations when we're developing numerical methods. So which rep processes are represented by the shallow water equations? Um, the, all of these processes are represented by the full Navier-Stokes equations. And I'd like you to um, have a think about which of these processes are also are represented by just the, the Navier-Stokes equations or also by the Navier-Stokes equations. Um, pause the video to do that and then when you've, when you've had some guesses, uh, start the video again and I'll go through the answer. So pause it now. Okay, so horizontal advection, yes, that's in the shallow water equations. Acoustic waves are not in the shallow water equations. There's no um, uh, uh, compressibility of, uh, of, the, of the flow. It goes up and down, but it doesn't compress. No vertical advection, there's nothing vertical. We've got Coriolis. Got gravity waves. That's one of the things that's the really important things that makes the shallow water equations interesting. Uh, you can have diffusion in the shallow water equations. Rossby waves again. Rossby waves are so important for atmospheric circulation, and they're represented in the shallow water equations. There's no heat in the shallow water equations. 
Um, there's no adiabatic expansion, and again, this is things to do with heat. Um, there's no atmospheric convection, that's a moist convection and uh, buoyant convection and clouds. Uh, there is geostrophic balance, so that's the balance between um, pressure gradients and the Coriolis force. And you can get geostrophic turbulence, because geostrophic turbulence is, um, has got the Coriolis force and nonlinear non -linear advection. All of those are in the shallow water equations. In the next video, we're going to do some um, look at the uh, some analytical solutions of the shallow water equations before moving on to numerical methods.